And we are back at 19 minutes after the hour. You know, with all the high-profile kidnapping cases in the headlines that we've been reporting here and have been reported across the media, many parents are wondering just what to do to keep their kids safe. How do you warn children about dangers without frightening them unnecessarily, and how much should you tell them? Well, joining us now from Denver to talk about that is child advocate and education expert, Gail Gross. Thank you very much for your time today. We sure do appreciate it, Ms. Gross. Uh, first of all, let me ask you this. Really, is there an age group that you shouldn't be talking with about these sorts of things because we've seen all these stories they've all been young children five six seven that sort of age well you know everything is age appropriate if we give information to children honestly and within the uh, category of their own age then it's important always to prepare them that's what parenting is about we have to teach our children protect our children and guide them through the minefields really of childhood yeah but see that's the tricky part i mean how do you tell an uneducated or an unprofessional a, a, a parent say who's not a professional in your field what exactly is age appropriate or how do you have an age appropriate discussion how do you, how do you tell, teach a parent to do that? You know, little children, like zero to about ten, are in a place we call concrete operations. They think in images very concretely. Hmm. So if they were grabbed, we tell them in images to windmill, swim, rotate their hands so they're hard to grab, yell, scream, bite, anything they can do to make a lot of commotion because you know that intimidates the intimidator. Yeah. How about um, the next age group above say age five or six? Well even then they're still in concrete operations. It's a good thing to put a little whistle around your children, partner with your school so that all these children are issued a little whistle, blow that whistle if they can. We say Velcro, grab onto something, whether it's a bike or a tree, it gives a whole new meaning to hug a tree, mm -hmm. or anything <laughs> nearby, yell stranger, so that when that poor, uh, uh, perpetrator comes near them, people know it's not their parent. All right, as a matter of fact, we've jotted down some of these notes that you've given us. And then I want to go to the next one, because the next screen I'm looking at here is, you say that um, a child, if, they, if a child is thrown into a car, they should stick a pencil in the ignition or remove the wires in, in a trunk. Why that? An older child can have, just like this uh, Eric, little girl Erica, older child, a child has more critical thinking, and that's about 10 up. And so that child can learn and be practiced and rehearsed at home so that if they're put in a trunk they can take that panel off know it's not dangerous to touch those wires remove those wires then a policeman might stop if the lights are disengaged or the brake is disengaged if they're thrown in the front seat they can put bubble gum or a, a pencil even in the ignition if they're thrown in the back seat or even in the front seat they can open a door you know the first choices of the first few seconds can save their lives mm -hmm. if we practice and rehearse our children vigilantly and parent them in a very adult way yeah. that could save their lives because they react in a, a very prepared way and they don't have to really think. Well, let me ask you this one final question, Ms. Gross, because I talk to a lot of parents uh, like when at school and picking up my kids and it seems like a lot of parents are afraid to even broach these kind of topics with their kids. You know, a lot of parents may have, I don't know, misperceptions or their own perceptions about what a kid is able to, to handle without being afraid or, or about being scared to death of either watching the news or leaving the house in the first place. What should a parent know about what a, what a child is actually able to process? You know, we have to approach this new world the way we did telling a child when they cross the street, stop, look, and listen. As they get older, we give them sex information and education, and now we have to give them abduction education. Hmm. And we have to sit and give age-appropriate information Older children are more critical in their thinking. They can trust their intuition. If a car is driving nearby and slow, they can move away. They know not to talk to strangers and not to go to strangers, not to get into a car. If an adult asks for help to find a puppy or says your parent is dead, don't expect that that stranger is, has your best interest at heart. And define a stranger as an acquaintance, anybody that we don't know well. So it's a whole new approach that we have to give our children about being polite to adults and what is a stranger, a whole new communication. Well, I never dreamt there'd be a day where that would be a sad thing to talk about like that. Boy, that they even have to realize that you have to discuss these kind of things with your kids. Gail Gross, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the advice, and we sure hope parents aren't listening this morning actually will take it to heart. All right, we're coming up on 24 minutes after the hour. We'll take a break. Back and forth after that.